through majestic forests, alpine valleys and crystal clear lakes, following the trails of wild animals in search of rare birds in places where no man had set a foot before. Precious, magnificent nature in all its diversity and grandeur in the documentary series Kazakhstan's Wildlife Sanctuaries. It is the early morning on Sirdarya River. Under the bright sunlight, green fields diffuse emerald glow. Sparkling silver water runs in the river. This year, spring has arrived later. Every morning, the staff of the Sirdarya Turkestan Nature Park prepares nutrients for inhabitants of the park. Today, the menu for wild boars and pheasants consists of corn and wheat. Wild boars have very poor eyesight, not that they need it in thick reeds. It is compensated with excellent hearing and smelling. Wild pigs can sense the smell of grain from dozens of meters distance and corn even farther than that. Therefore, rangers threw the forage into shallow pits and closed it with stumps so that magpies wouldn't take it all away. Boars will definitely find it and will have a good time digging it out. Bright roosters and modest chicks can often be spotted swarming around wild boars. Pheasants inhabit thorny two guys with thickets of silver berries and dog roses. Pheasants collect silver berries in autumn to feed on them during winter time. That's why pheasants stay here. We have plenty of silver berry trees, enough to feed pheasants. The newest of the southern Kazakhstan nature parks, the Sirdarya Turkestan State Regional Nature Park, celebrated its third anniversary in September 2016. It was established to preserve rare and endangered species, plants and animals, protect archaeological, historical and cultural heritage monuments. The territory of the park consists of three areas. The total area is 120,000 hectares. Two branches, Turkestan and Sirdarya, are located in the floodplain of the Sirdarya and Aris rivers. The objects of protection here are sandy desert landscapes and relic Tugai or riparian forests with its unique flora and fauna. In the floodplain forests of Sirdarya, habitat forming flora is represented by Turanga poplars, silver berries, and rare types of osier. Two kinds of Turanga poplars, the Euphrates poplar and Pruinoza, both of them are listed in the Red Book of Kazakhstan. Pruinoza poplar is rather rare. Among bushes, the habitat forming species are Halimodendrons, salt trees, or Chigil. Liquorice is another widespread plant in this area. Turanga is a poplar with a very distinct crown. Throughout many centuries, it adapted to life in saline desert soils. This relic tree is able to tolerate summer heat up to 50 degrees Celsius and severe frost in winter. There are several Turanga groves in the national park. That is where boars, roe deer, pheasants find their shelter. Previously, floodplain forests of the Sirdarya were actively used by local population. There are about 40 settlements along the Sirdarya River. Local population was using waters of Sirdarya for agriculture, irrigation and farming. 
After the park was formed, it was divided into four sections. The protected zone, the zone of environmental stabilization, the zone of tourist recreational activity, and the zone of limited economic activity, all in accordance with the law on specially protected natural areas. The creation of the nature park has indeed changed the life of the region dramatically. Until recently, local people mercilessly cut down floodplain forests. That led to destruction of many wild animal populations. There were cases of poaching and illegal fishing. Such cases happen occasionally even now, but they are immediately stopped by employees of the park. The main task of the nature park is environmental education of the population. We inform people about which areas they can use as pastures, where to harvest hay, where they are not allowed to be at all. The main attraction and pride of the Turkestan branch is an enclosure built to restore the population of Bactrian or Tugai deer. A lot can be learned from the fate of these rare red deer subspecies. They inhabited the flood plain of Sirdarya from immemorial times. These deers were found here up until the middle of the 20th century. However, they couldn't compete with humans over their habitat. The last deer was killed in 1956. In 2001, eight animals were brought to Sirdarya from Karachin Gil Hunting Reserve. First years in the park were hard. The first generation of deer couldn't adapt to Sirdaria climate. But in the following years, thanks to the efforts of our deer herders and by following scientific recommendations, we were able to achieve an increase of Bactrian deer population. Today, local deer population is not in danger. Half-domesticated deer have long been accustomed to live next to humans. Upon hearing the car engine, they immediately rush to the feeding trough. I have been working as a herder since 2001. At the moment, we have 63 back friend deers here. We keep them in enclosed area. And outside there are 126 deers. There is plenty of food. We prepare hay, we feed them twice a day with mixed fodder and vegetables, cabbage, carrots. They eat well. Deers are comfortable in a big enclosure. However, there are some problems as well. The animals are visibly small. Near breeding doesn't benefit the ungulates, and zoologists are alarmed. There is a need to bring in stags and does from other lands to improve the gene pool. This is one of the immediate tasks for development of Serbaria Turkestan Nature Park. We have conceived four big biological projects for the moment. One is creation of new nurseries for Bactrian deer and Siberian raw deer in Serdaria branch. Also, making new enclosure for cultivation of Serdaria pheasant in Turkestan branch. After visiting two branches in the floodplain of Serdaria, our expedition set off towards the Karatau range. Far to the north, silhouettes of the range are looming through the mist. The nature was under protection for many decades here, on the territory of the Sunga, Bugun and Boral Dai forestries. These three sites were united, and that is how Boral Dai branch of the nature park was created. The area of this branch exceeds 36,000 hectares. In the middle of the 19th century, the scientific study of the animal kingdom of Boral Dai Tau had begun. 
Kuratau Gali that inhabits these places was registered first by Russian zoologist Nikolai Alexeyevich Severtsev in 1873. Special attention is drawn to protect and restore its population. Argali prefer open spaces, steep slopes of mountains and foothills, rocky gorges overgrown with shrubs, valleys with stony hills and alpine meadows. The staff of the reserve is well acquainted with migration routes of the mountain sheep. In some places, these routes cross busy highways, pass near residential areas. To ensure the safety of animals, they proposed a project to create an ecological corridor. It takes the centuries-old natural roots of wild animals into account and leads through Karatau Reserve, Surdaria Turkestan Nature Park, reaches Sairamugam Park and Aksuja Bagli Reserve. Biologists believe that creation of ecological corridor is going to help to restore and preserve the biodiversity of the nature in Karatau Range. Apart from Argali, several other endangered red-listed species inhabit the territory of the branch. These are Indian porcupine and European free-tailed bat. Every year, employees of the Sirdarya Turkestan Nature Park conduct animal recording and monitoring routine. We've installed surveillance cameras to monitor deer. These cameras show feeders. This is the place of watering. The third place here is where they scatter food along the animal paths. We also use photo traps. We keep tracks of animals based on photo traps data. Our expedition has come across the spring colchicum blossoming. People call it simply a snowdrop. The glades of the foot plain forest were strewn with beautiful flowers resembling white stars opening towards the sun. It's pleasing to see that a red lizard plant is abundant in these areas. About 700 kinds of plants are found on slopes and gorges. Many of them are endemic, relict and rare species listed in the Red Book of Kazakhstan. Despite it being an early spring, the slopes are already adorned with blossoming almond. Arum urus or foxtail lily's leaves are just appearing from under the ground and their distinctive rosettes infuse grey slopes with greenish tint. First flowers are already opened on several shrubs of Fritillaria severtsovi. People named this interesting plant Tau Alga. In the past, the balls were grinded into flour, which was used to make flatbreads. Buds of Tianshan ash, pistachio, regal spear, and extremely rare spira anthus plant are swelling in anticipation of real spring warmth in the floodplains of the rivers Kashkarati and Boraldai. Out of numerous types of tulips inhabiting these slopes, two subspecies are truly unique. These are the Greeks and Kaufman's tulips. More than 250 species of birds were found on the territory of the nature park. Red-listed birds include black storks, Asian golden eagles or barecoat, and booted eagles. Indian paradise flycatcher, orioles and nightingales nest in shady groves of the park. There is also a rich history behind Boraldai Mountains. During the Stone Age, people were settling within these caves and their settlements are well known. It is not uncommon to see burial mounds of different eras in the foothills and mountain valleys. Usually these are Saka burial grounds. They are an integral part of the local landscape. Several places are decorated with ancient rock paintings, petroglyphs. Hunters of the Bronze Age depicted inhabitants of the surrounding mountains, Argali, deer, wild boars, as well as ritual scenes involving people and mysterious symbols. Local petroglyphs have not been studied well enough and are waiting for someone to do so. During our expedition, we saw that even in such a short period of time, 
It is possible to achieve notable results when people involved in work love nature and truly are dedicated to what they do. We are heading off for a new journey towards protected corners of Kazakhstan.